This is the Radio City Indie Exchange and joining me today is Vasundra V because she's released her latest track run and I'm very excited to speak to her because she's one of those rare um, musicians we have who is so, I think, I think she's clearly the one we have who, you know, we can, you know, put her up there in the global map along with some international greats and um, Nothing gives me more joy knowing that she is a homegrown musician like that. Uh, so welcome, Basundra. Thank you so much for having on your, me on your show. And uh, that was really an extremely sweet <laughs> introduction. Thank you so much. The pleasure is all mine, Basundra. Uh, so quickly for those of our viewers um, who are not uh, particularly acquainted to uh, indie music or who are not very familiar with your works, uh, so let's well, you know, begin by asking you a little bit about your journey from how you started. Uh, I believe your grand aunt uh, was one of a was you know was one one of the very renowned names in Assamese folk music, uh, um, and she she you know she uh, strangely I was seeing one, a live session that you had with Papa on a couple of months back, and uh, there was a very sweet connection that you both shared that his father had learned from your grand aunt. Yeah, her name is Pratima Borua Pande, and uh, yeah. she. Um, uh, she was, uh, her, her heart was actually all about reviving uh, Goalparia music, uh, and which is a form of Assamese folk music for all those of us who are not from Assam here. So, so my granddad's life's work was about recording and reviving uh, a form of folk music that was dying. And so in a sense, she was an artist and an activist at the same time. Usually in Indian households, especially, you know, when uh, children hail from a particular classical background, you know, where their uh, immediate uh, parents or, you know, their relatives or their uh, grandfathers and grandmothers, you know, they have been following a certain uh, pattern of traditional music. Uh, you, you do not want to go the traditional route. You um, wanted to pursue something that's more Western influence and uh, so, you know that that is where you wanted to make your identity. So how did that switch happen as a as a younger child before the whole artistic uh, side of yours came into being? Actually, uh, it's a lovely question because you know when I was growing up, my granddad he had all this vinyl that he would play and which had like ABBA and Frank Sinatra and the Beatles and classical music and my granddad's music. All my uncles used to play the dotara, not because they were participating in the revival of the music, but because they loved it. So, you know, when I was a kid, I never understood the concept of genres. I was like, okay, this is a song. It happens to be in English. This one happens to be in Hindi and this one happens to be in Assamese. So uh, that concept wasn't there at all for me because culturally my family never, you know, everything would like play one after the other and we kind of became friends with songs. We never really thought um uh, about genres and uh, uh, that's why for me it wasn't really a flip or anything um uh, you know just like my grand aunt i have a deeper voice i'm not a very light voiced singer yep. and uh, uh, and it just seemed you know and i also was born with this vibrato and you know sometimes obviously many of our teachers in schools some of them were western uh, background teachers and some of them were classical background teachers so my classical background teachers to get quite mad at me saying no see that you should like ask pay and you know because i had like a vibrato in my voice since i was a kid so um it just seemed like my voice fit better in a choral setting in a gospel setting in you know a, a western kind of setting and that's why i was cast more in those roles throughout school and i i ended up being being better at it and that's how it is there was really no uh, a decision as such from my end but uh, of course you know for, as uh, indian uh, kids i mean you know for i speak to a lot of uh, musicians uh, about this you know and somewhere uh, there's always it, there's bound to be a little clash uh, you know in ideologies in you know in the schools of music because of of course the generation gap is only such in uh, in indian households so um, how did uh, you convince your uh, immediate side of the family that okay that this was some this was a style that you wanted to adopt and uh, this is you know how you wanted to pursue your musical pursuits um it was scary for my family when i told them and you know i was like in class 10 and who wants to listen to a 15 year old when they say i want to do music forever 
and um, uh, my family was um, you know they were kind about it though they never said no but what they said was prove it so i had to make it a point uh, to at that age to just do every competition that i could and mm. to tell my parents that hey i love this but i'm also working hard and i'm also cutting it so you know it was important for me at that time as a child to win every competition that i could Yeah. and uh, and every time every time that would happen it was like a matter of relief for me that okay okay my parents think i'm good enough to do this and uh, because you know they never wanted to be uh, much as they wanted to support me they wanted to be very clear that i can do this and i'm doing it out of merit and not out of some uh, wish for fame or wish for importance or some sort of a dream that's not grounded in reality So it was a good check, uh, check and balance thing going on in my family for a long time. But as a but but as an individual, uh, uh, Vasundra, when you when you tread that path, of course it can be scary. It can be very jittery, to be honest, because uh, you know the, the the overwhelming pressure of just wanting to prove yourself can be so. Uh, consuming in a way that you know of, of course i mean it may have uh, affected you uh, at that time emotionally it may have been very draining uh, and it, like you know how did you motivate yourself and push yourself that no there is there is a there is a goal that i'm focusing towards there is something that i want to get at and i will do whatever it takes to get there but of course the process can be very consuming so how did you keep going at it you're right about the uh, psychological impact of being competitive in the beginning for me it was very innocent i have to win competitions to tell my parents i can do this yeah. but then it does become part of you know it it becomes part of your personality you wanna like go there and you wanna like kill it and all of that and uh, you know when that goes on for too long it's not very healthy Yes. because then you pit yourself against others when music is actually more of a community activity it's a group activity it is inherently collaborative you can't just i can't just sing alone uh, with no instruments and nothing and you know uh, it won't be a song a song is a, a community activity so uh, thankfully i managed to get into a choir and uh, it was called artists unlimited it was like this amazing choir in delhi and uh, they believed in non competitiveness and i think that you know if that wouldn't have happened to me i would have become like quite a negative competitive sort of a person uh, uh so competition is a reality but it should i do i think you know there's a limit to it within yourself otherwise you know it can it can create a lot of not nice stuff inside your mind so in that sense you're absolutely right Uh, uh competitiveness also leads to fear it leads uh, yeah. to you being not trusting of others as music making is all about trust and the creative process about flowing with another and allowing the other to kind of infuse themselves into the idea so yes choir helped with that and which is why you know now when i mentor any uh younger artists i tell them to be part of choirs because as a person you you become extremely music serving Yeah. you you care as much about music as what you are doing in it uh so vasundra of course from there uh yeah, you met your collaborator long time collaborator adil and you know of course you all became this very uh extraordinary duo adil and vasundra and then of course now you have moved on now to become a solo artist and you know with run clearly first of all you're looking amazing in the video it's so beautifully shot and it's so soothing to watch i i i was just mesmerized when i saw the whole music video right now and uh, i cannot imagine the kind of uh, blood sweat and the efforts that have gone in behind making such a beautiful video i just want to ask you vasundra uh, why was run the story you wanted to tell why was this the composition that you wanted to make your debut with as a solo artist um so i've been i've been singing professionally for like 15 years and you know generally people go solo much earlier and to do it, it at this point it had to be something that you know that the central question was you know who am i what am i doing and how is this music going to reflect my understanding of myself and uh, and of course you know through uh, not just not just personally as me but through the last 2 years watching lots of people 
through making connections with audience members and community members, I see that, you know, we all have an unlived life within us, uh, a life that's playing on within us, which, we, which we're not trans leading into reality yeah. like many of us like a dear friend of mine wanted to open a cafe and you know that's a life he was living secretly inside him while, while he was doing his teaching job so um run is about making the essential connection between what you a your identity and your inner identity the identity that you project and that which you recognize within yourself and you know we all over over the course of life, we all become fragmented into roles. We become fragmented into bits of understanding about ourselves. But run is about, you know, bringing all of those together. And, you know, and, and there's a lot of peace in that. There's a lot of strength in that. And, you know, when a, especially a woman, but when anybody kind of gathers all of himself, can see it and then can own it, you know, that's an extraordinary kind of peace and strength and happiness and I, I wanted to say that in the simplest way in the song and uh, yeah that's why it was important it was personally meaningful for me and and it had to happen this way. Um, Vasundra in your right as an artist you have performed with some of the world's greatest names you know from Dhruv Ghanekar to Ranjit Barrett and you've performed at some of the biggest stages across the world I mean just just a look at your a brief look at your uh, website actually you know speaks volumes about your repertoire as an artist uh, of course last year I mean since last year this pandemic has brought in a lot of existential dread for many of us uh, and I'm sure it's it's so much it's been so much more overwhelming for artists especially uh, because firstly I'm sure a lot of your learnings as an artist you know they stem from the travels that you know y'all do as artists you know where the, the shows that y'all perform at the the members the community members the audience members that you interact with uh, as an artist when suddenly the pandemic deprives you of this these create, creative learnings somewhere there's always that endangerment of you know stumbling upon a block of sorts uh first of all how did you see yourself through uh, you know this really uh, adverse period and uh, what has been your learning as an artist well i think uh, the pandemic has changed all our lives so we've faced many personal losses a lot of i mean i've lost family i've lost friends and, to hear uh, thank you so yes it it uh i think i th I think the pandemic also clarified in my head that bro you're here your life is a gift you are lucky to be alive yeah so what are you doing with your life and uh, uh, it was you know I think that's another reason why Ran had to come out towards the end of the pandemic because all of it actually a bulk of the work happened through the pandemic um, and uh, for me actually I I decided that I wanted to be part of whatever reconstruction activities that an artist goes through. And I was already mentoring uh, singers and uh, actually I'm a voice nerd. So, you know, I, I study vocal health and vocal technique and that's what I train professional singers in. So because a lot of people found themselves out of work, I first started like this series on Instagram where I did, you know, 12 weeks of training like singers for free, just come and sing and, you know, kind of at least have some schedule going when schedules go missing. Right. And uh, and after that, I got, you know, deeper and deeper into into training uh, voices. And that's how actually the last uh, year and a half has been for me. Uh, I also released a book last year, which was for artists to take a look at their careers, what debut they're making, how they're timing it. Yeah. So for me, it was like, you know, because I can, I'm going to work with the reconstruction of musicians because like I love this community. And uh, yeah, but but, you know, going back to your central question, it's what the hell are you doing on this planet? You've got to be quite clear about it. And you've got to then not question it and just do it. You know, like there's, there's no more time for all that. Oh, ye kya bolega, wo kaun bolega, kya bolega, kind of stuff. Uh, Vasundra, um, of course, we, 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 I mean, you mentioned about your book uh, where you have, uh, you know, listed out uh, footnotes for um, a young emerging artists, you know, who wish to have some clarity on how can they tread this path, something that you've been doing for so many years. Uh, why was it something that uh, you felt 
that this was a responsibility you wanted to undertake as an artist in your capacity, you know, write out a handbook that would prove to be a useful guide to these young musicians? So uh, for years, actually, musicians' parents have been coming up to me saying, you know, what should my daughter do? And, you know, should I send her to music school and all of that abroad that, you know, is very expensive. And uh, um, when I was at that moment, when I was telling my parents that, you know, I want to do music, they didn't know what to consult, who to consult. I had no roadmap for myself, you know, because everybody in the community had a totally different opinion. So I decided to write a book about this for all those who are at that stage and for their parents. But I didn't want to be Gyan only from my side. So I interviewed a lot of people from the music industry so that it was not just me and they would get a balanced perspective. And uh, um, again, community is my passion. I know that if independent music has to get anywhere, the community has to wake up and, you know, do the right things. And as I learn things and, uh, and you know, more than that, I have access to people who have done this for 30 years more than I have. And so, you know, if, if I have access to people who are a lot more um, uh, experienced than me and I have access to the little ones, I know that, you know, I can create something which, which effectively answers all their questions with all the wisdom that, you know, the stalwarts from the industry are carrying. So that was the point of the book, really. Uh, before we conclude, uh, Vasundra, uh, what's next after Run? What are you looking forward to doing after Run? More songs, more songs for sure. I think, you know, um, all this while I've been focused a lot on mentorship and collaboration and writing books and stuff. But I want to use the next few years to, to sing, just to, you know, right. get back to <laughs> singing, playing, recording and, and that. So definitely more songs. Uh, we're already, in fact, uh, we, we've got two more songs that are getting made, but then it's a longish process. It needs to cook and it needs to develop. And so, you know, I like to give it time. Uh, lastly, uh, Vasundra, the, I think uh, the last couple of years have seen the emergence and, you know, uh, just so many wonderful uh, indie women making such successful careers in uh, independent music. I mean, we can name we can literally name them today but um who have you been following uh, lately and you know whose works you really admire as an artist and you feel like oh maybe i would love to collaborate with them someday wow oh my god okay so uh before we even get to who's who's doing stuff now hmm. i want to say that one of the leading lights for for me to also think that you know I can sing and I can, a person like me can do this, is Sunita Rao. She, I was little, and you know, that was that wave of like, not independent per se, but like in non-film music that was coming up and we, we were watching. And she was somebody that I connected with deeply. And um, uh, yeah, so what, what I want to say is that all of us that are doing this are actually kind of, following her footsteps you'll see a lot of similarity you know in vibe and in, you know just she she was this this example that a lot of people modeled themselves on and uh, yeah I, I love her I'm glad she's here and she's constantly you know supporting everything we do and you know cheering us on and, and stuff so she's she's somebody I, I adore I love Hanika Anita is my, I, I love her. She's a lovely human being and she's writing such beautiful, heartfelt songs. And, you know, as women, I feel that we are the spokesperson for the emotional life of people. Yeah, We can do it. We, we spend a lot of time thinking about it. And so, you know, um, we, women are great at this. And uh, I, I adore, I adore what Hanita is doing. And uh, yeah, she's, she's also an old friend uh, and I, yeah, let, it's not so much about wanting to collaborate, but just feeling so happy that, that, you know, these things exist now and they didn't exist like 10 years back. Right. So, yeah, lots and lots of women. I love Nisa. I love, I mean, so many people. Well, all I can say is Vasundra onwards and upwards. And uh, it's such a pleasure to have spoken to you this afternoon. I really cannot wait for the more wonderful music that's about to come our way. Uh, all my best wishes and all our best wishes to you. Uh, Keep, do, keep giving us such beautiful tracks. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for having me on your show and I'd love to stay in touch.